Hey you guys, um, my Facebook family and everybody who's watching this video, uh, my name is Nara, I am a real estate agent for the last 16 years and I work in Northern Virginia and I wanted to uh, record this video and post it so that you guys can uh, see the facts that are out there and uh, make your own conclusions instead of relying on all of the depressing headlines and uh, thinking that unemployment is going up so the real estate market will follow and it's uh, very bad out there so instead of uh, listening to all of that uh, honestly crap I uh, please look at the facts look at the numbers and make your own conclusions and this is why I wanted to share this video with you so let's review some uh, facts and numbers all right so the first slide that I'd like you to take a look at is um, the chief economists for core logic estimated that the average home equity um, is about $177,000 at the start of 2020. So that's between, that's just among people who had mortgage. And next slide, you will see how many people actually have their homes free and clear of mortgage. But of those who do have, the average equity is 177. And this is what I am talking about. Look at how many uh, actually, let take, let's take a look at this. 37% of all homes are owned free and clear. There's no mortgage to worry about. Out of those who do have a mortgage, 53.8% have at least 50% equity, which means average of 177,000 of equity. Now, compare that to the situation that le led to 2008 and think about how this will be different for the housing um, crisis or what we hear everywhere housing is going to collapse um, we're hoping not just simply because people have too much equity in their properties to walk away from them as opposed to uh, prior 2008 if you remember mortgages were given to everyone who wanted them um, there were no not many restrictions um, people got uh, bought houses that they uh, couldn't pay for from the get-go so when the crisis hit um, a lot of people walked away from their homes and mortgages and hence we received a lot of foreclosures and short sales and it doesn't look like it's going to be happening uh, in um, these in this economic recession let's take a look at this slide here so this is uh, unemployment projections and then comparison to Great Recession of the 2008 right and Great Depression we're hearing the comparisons of what's going on right now right now to those two periods in our economy and the comparison in the headlines is as if it's something similar in fact it's not if you take a look at the um, projections and these projections are made by Goldman Sachs if you see that the unemployment yes unemployment rate will be huge in 2020 but if you take a look at the following years of 21 22 and 23 th the unemployment rate becomes better and better and better which means that this whole recession and unemployment is projected to be very short compared to what we've seen uh, during Great Recession and Great Depression. If you take a look at the number of years of high unemployment rate, which um, subsequently, you know, was um, affecting the housing market, you will see that projections for COVID um, economy is not as bad as long as they were in uh, those two periods in our economy. So this is the pr projections in a different format. If you can see the projections for COVID is two years right you we will see you'll see that we are projected to go back to normal to pre-COVID market in about two years now the great recession of 2008 basically what let's call it a housing uh, crisis of 2008 was about nine years we we got back to where we were and it took us nine years now in great depression it took us 12 years now if you think uh, the longer the period of recession depression the the worse the impact on the economy and subsequently housing market you will see that if we have a two-year as projected now this is again Goldman Sachs and all of those big uh, name companies that are projecting these things so hopefully they're right now of course situation may change but given the statistics and given the um, the knowledge that we've gathered so far and the types of jobs lost right now 
they can actually project this and uh, we can only hope that it's actually uh, correct. Now, let's take a look at this graph. If you see that uh, in prior to year 2000, we needed about 21.2% of our income to buy a home. In 2006, that number was 25.4. So you had, you needed a quarter of your income to buy a home. Now it's only 14.7. That also um, helps with a quick recovery of the housing market. And if you look at this one, you will see that it's actually a V-shaped recovery. You will see the companies that are uh, making these projections. The only uh, very conservative um, projection is from Wells Fargo. They are expecting in quarter three of 2020 GDP to be negative, but still we, we do see that quarter three and quarter four are projected to be positive. And you see the names of the companies who are coming up with these. So, um, I don't know if we should trust them or not, but I think the consensus is it should be V-shaped recovery. Now, of course, this all depends on what our policymakers will do. And of course, it all depends on um, the, the future decisions that will be made. And right now, we are all hoping for V-shaped recovery. But if you take a look at this uh, sentence, it just clearly tells us that those projections are made given that the policymakers uh, will do what they really should do and they um, correctly react to this whole situation, which the hope is they will. And the last slide I'd like to share with you is the PricewaterhouseCoopers survey of 50 liters from cross-section of industries. And you will see the span of one month. They were surveyed uh, as to what they thought uh, they will, will go back to business as usual. And if you see on March 15th, two thirds of them thought we would bounce back in less than 30 days. As time went by, that optimism went down. But take a look at April 14th survey. What I've really kind of jumped at me is the 39% of them thought that we would get back to normal within one to three months. 22% of them thought three to six months. So no matter how you look at it, I still think this is way better than several years. These are the numbers I really wanted to share with you and show you that um, the reality and statistics and the facts are a little bit easier, bit better than what we are seeing in headlines and in, in the news. Yes, we do realize that a lot of people are losing their jobs and the situation is dire. Uh, for a lot of people, but please remember that this will go uh, out, go be over sooner than it was during Great Depression and Great Recession. Um, and that's really the hope. And um, really just make your own conclusions. Um, as far as I'm concerned, as a real estate in Northern Virginia real estate agent, I wanted to tell you what's what I'm experiencing right now, these days in my work. I had clients, I still have clients who want to look at homes. I have my sellers that are holding off uh, to sell their homes. They don't want people in their homes, so we are not uh, listing anything right now, but I do have buyers who do need to buy because their rent is, expires or they want to buy because they want uh, to move to a better uh, locality. No matter the reason, they steal people with stable jobs or cash. They do want to go ahead and buy. Uh, they do believe that the real estate market is going to be strong and it's not going to crash. And uh, my buyers are not the only ones because right now I am participating in multiple offer situations on every single house I am showing to my clients. I have several families that I'm helping and all of them we are dealing with multiple offer situations. Um, and those are anywhere from Ashburn, Arlington, Fairfax, um, all of the Fairfax County. If the house is pretty, pretty well prepared for the market, the priced right, the house goes under contract within 24 to 48 hours with multiple offers over asking, well over asking. And it's still happening. It happened to me yesterday. It happened to me two days ago in Ashburn. Um, it's still happening to my clients and this is still 
crazy seller's market. Although I do hope, I really hope that this market will stabilize because of this whole situation and it's no longer be a strong seller's market. But we had such a huge deficit of inventory when we were coming into this March, um, February, March situation with the virus that we still have deficit of inventory. We still have a lot of buyers looking because they want to take advantage of the low interest rate. So, um, we do have fewer homes going on the market that's true but we still have a lot of buyers so we're still showing houses as much as safe as we can possibly do that uh, we do a lot of the stuff virtually and so we still work and we still help our clients so if you have any questions or if you want to maybe if you have to sell your home or if you want to buy a home later or maybe you want to wait for this virus to go um, away and then start I would suggest getting ready now. Like if you're thinking about buying after this virus situation comes down, at least get yourself pre-approved. Uh, mortgage companies are still working. So get yourself a pre-approval letter. So as soon as we're ready to go back to, sh to see houses in person and you think that it's time for you to start really looking, you will be ready with that pre-approval letter because without it, you really cannot do anything. And if you like a house uh, and you really want to jump on it, you will not have the time to get yourself pre-approved. So get yourself pre-approved, get yourself ready. Another thing you want to do is get yourself ready and familiarize with the market terminology, with market um conditions with with things you you need to know before you actually put an offer and to do that you can uh, check out my channel and I have a lot of different short videos educating uh, people about buying and selling so at least you know we are all home we have time to see if that will help you uh, with some um, getting ready to when we are back to normal and hopefully that's going to be sooner than later. So that's it for me. I hope this was helpful. Please comment uh, or reach out directly to me with any questions. Or if you want to dispute, I, I know for a fact I have a couple of friends who really will want to um, scrutinize these numbers and maybe put some comments. Please do. I always look for any input from my uh, friends and family, okay? Thank you, and I hope to provide a more updates as we go further with this whole conundrum. Stay, stay safe. Please stay safe, stay healthy. That's the main thing. Um, everything else will come. It'll all work out as long as we're all healthy and alive, right? So, bye. Till next time.